I grew up in a very traditional family, Washington Heights, New York. My parents are both survivors of the Holocaust. However, my brother married a Christian woman. And uh, of course, my grandmother did not accept that. She never talked to my brother again. I found that the Jewish community slammed the door on his face. So what I have today is a Christian brother with a Christian wife and two, a Christian niece and a Christian nephew. I can't help but believe if the Jewish community had opened the door to him, things would have been different. I was born in Minnesota to a really strict Catholic family, and I honestly had never heard of Judaism. I remember going to my rabbi and saying, you know, it's, I want to marry her, but I'm conflicted. Uh, I knew I loved her, but I knew that I couldn't go through uh, with marriage without raising our kids Jewish. It was very important to Craig. So we took a class. Really, the class in, instilled a lot of questions and debate among the two of us, which was a really important part of our relationship. And we sometimes leave classes. There might have been a very tense ride home and came to the decision to raise our kids in Judaism. Intermarriage is highest among younger people, and it's right under 50%. We can either bury our heads in the sand to pretend it doesn't happen and, and like disown them like what I was raised, or we can open the door. I choose opening the door, and I choose opening it very, very widely. She says, mm -hmm. you know, well, why aren't you Jewish? The Mother's Circle is um, a program sponsored by the Jewish Outreach Institute where mothers come together to learn about how to raise Jewish children. It's a nine-month course. We meet twice a month. And basically, it's just the how-tos. Unfortunately, we had a situation where it was awful because it was her cousin who actually told her she wasn't Jewish yeah. because her mommy wasn't Jewish. Right. It is a sacrifice to take on the commitment of raising a child in Judaism when you weren't raised Jewish and were raised in a different faith. You are giving up a huge, huge part of yourself. Even if you keep it for your own, you don't share it with your children. I think Mother Circle is a good resource for us. It's a good resource for our family. I mean, they're just very supportive of trying to help us find a place that's right for our family. Guys, that okay? Michael had three children. And our three children that came with me are fairly observant. I'm not Michael's children's mother, but I'm very involved in their upbringing, and they're Jewish, and I want to support that. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that while I still allow my daughter to have her Christian um, faith. And mine, not give mine up, but um, incorporate Michael's and his families into our total family. I think that with Abby, our baby, I'm going to have to become more Jewish, I think, um, because I can see that that's probably the path we'll take with her. It's complicated. It's complicated. But lots of things are complicated. That doesn't mean you don't try it. I don't know where I would be without JOI. I mean, to not have that Jewish outreach feeling Okay, my kid to be raised Catholic. My poor husband. <laughs> I was so proud of these women. I saw a group of women who are so completely committed to raising Jewish children. And they're taking on a project that is so much bigger than themselves. And they are kind of like wandering in the wilderness, in a sense, and we're there to help, help them find their way. Without the Mother Circle, we would not be as committed to Judaism as, as we are. I would love to see this program go nationally. It's too, it's too valuable, it's too important, it's too, just too critical to not bring it to other cities. In the beginning of 2002, the Jewish Federation of Southern Arizona commissioned a population study for Tucson found that of the 28,000 Jews that live here, 80% were not affiliated. We had 500 Jewish newcomers coming to Tucson every year, and 50% of our children were living in interfaith families. So the Federation hired Carrie and the JOI to come in and train us, basically, into how to do outreach work. Hey, guys. One of the programs that JOI has helped us with 
that I run is called Shalom Tucson, which is a program that welcomes newcomers and newly interested to the Jewish community. When we started our Shalom Tucson programs, our celebrations programs, our Kesher programs, we had nothing, and now we have a database of 900 names of people who have come through our programs. Of those 900 names, 110, and I think even more now, have joined synagogues. It enabled us some time to get to know the community, and within that year, found a synagogue that we, you know, would belong to and feel accepted in and feel... Welcome. Very welcome. One of our goals is to get interfaith families connected. I think that with the rate of intermarriage, um, if we don't make an effort to reach out to interfaith families and tell them, we want you, it's fine, join our synagogues, join our JCC, that we'll just lose our Jewish youth. We, we don't find that there's a, there's a conflict. You know, the kids are, are Jewish. They're not like a mixed religion, but we're a mixed culture family. I like being Jewish and having Napa as a Buddhist stepmother because you're different from everybody else. This man was actually the great grandpa of my bubby. When I get older and when I have kids, I like to like pass on the custom how our older ancestors fought to make the generation keep on going. And I'd like to keep that generation and teach my kids to keep the generation going. Remember your grandpa Michael? For Maliwan, I want her to be Jewish because it's her dad and I love him so much. And I want to, to let her grow in the way that daddy want her to be. Maliwan is getting more of a religious Jewish upbringing than I had with two Jewish parents. To me, you are losing a great family of Jewish children if you do not make these families welcomed without putting burden on the wife to convert. It shouldn't be a necessary issue because why? And why shouldn't those children be considered Jewish? We met in college. <sighs> <laughs> now we have uh, three lovely children and um, our agreement at the time that we were married was that they'd be raised as Jews. And we realized when they could start to talk that we would need some help in this matter because my daughter... One day she came back from the bus stop in kindergarten and said, so am I Jewish or Christmas? I like Shabbat because we get to see the family on Friday and it's really fun to see all of them together. And I like when we say the prayers and stuff because it makes me feel like we're more a part of the Jewish community because I know lots of other Jewish families do the same thing and it's just, just very traditional for us and it's just, I like it a lot. Judaism is not only uh, a heritage, it's a lifestyle and children who are brought up as Jewish, much like children who are adopted, whether you're born of the body of, or from the heart, they're your children, so therefore any child who is being raised Jewish should most definitely be embraced. If JOI were all over the United States, if they were invited into communities like they were invited into Tucson, I think we would have a lot more success in outreach efforts. I think Jews would feel much more welcome. We can't afford to be complacent, and JOI doesn't ever let you forget that. I think that, that my brother's choices was a gift to me to open my eyes and to look for new things, because there's a lot of my brothers out there. We're great people, you know, we're supposed to be the light upon the nations. We need to continue to be committed to the outreach, or else we're going to just lose a lot of other people that would be potentially amazing Jews and their children.